Okay, we got seven keyboards for around 70 bucks. Let's rock. I'm Rio Gian and welcome to the channel. This is a 70% form factor with what looks like standard row on the bottom, so finding key cast replacement for this keyboard should not be that hard. The reason why I said it looks like it is that the space bar, it looks slightly smaller, at least from the picture, so I'm hoping it's a standard bottom row. You have the choice of either blue or brown switch, so for those in the community, I think you guys would lean towards the brown switch, Personally, I would go for the blue switch because I do like that click. The cable is detachable which is nice because that is one less point of error. The cable that's included looks like it's braided with velcro so that's nice when you need to take the keyboard out for LAN parties. Assuming COVID dies down when you're watching this video, hopefully. On the website it says it's RGB. When I look at the pictures, the light seems to be on the same spot. So I'm hoping it's not seven colors. On the description it even said RGB backlight, it also says 8 monochrome modes, so it makes me think it's RGB. There are lights on the side of the keyboard from the picture, it looks like it's red. There are pictures with rainbows on the side, so it might be RGB, it might not. If you're planning to buy this and you want the side blades to be RGB, then check the return policy just in case if you're getting something different than what you want. Low profile blue switches is something that I would like to try out. I remember walking into a micro center and trying these laptops with the mechanical switches. They feel pretty freaking good. The bottom row looks standard but the problem with the KO low profile switch is that I'm not sure if there's aftermarket support for this type of switch. I'm hoping there is because I'm not sure how durable those low profile keycaps are. They look pretty thin so I'm not sure if they would break after a long period of use. There's this detachable cable which is nice but it's micro USB instead of USB-C. So that might be a problem for some of you guys. I know it's starting to be for me because most of my cables are now USB-C. There's just the one backlight so here's hoping you like the teal blue color, personally I do, but others might not. There's this also a 10 keyless design so for those that need a numpad you might want to skip this one or get a separate numpad depending on how you would like it. For the money, if there wasn't a logo on the top arrow keys I would say it looks like a pretty premium basic keyboard. Yeah, I know this one's under budget, but it looks so freaking cool. There are these keycaps that mix it looks like one of those retro typewriter, and I don't know how it feels, but it's definitely something that's worth the price of entry. The good thing is that the bottom row is standard, so in the event if you do want to change the keycaps later on, it shouldn't be too hard to find something in the aftermarket. One of the things that I didn't see if the website's mentioning this or not is the keyboard being RGB. If the colors are stuck like this then it's gonna take some getting used to. For some strange reason the more I look at the keyboard the more it begins to make sense to me. Like the grouping of colors. So the WASD and the arrow keys are grouped to one color, the numpad is grouped to another color, it really seems to make sense. So like for the other 7 color keyboards they would either make all of the colors like in one row, like each row is a color, or each kind of section is a color, but this kind of grouping makes sense. There's also a dedicated media control and a volume scroll wheel. Also there is a wrist rest but it's probably hard plastic and it does seem like it's magnetic but if it is magnetic that's really good for the price. There are two versions. The black keyboard has brown switch, the white keyboard has black switch. So I'll link both just in case if you want to check out the white keyboard.
Since the other one was under budget, I figured I'd bring balance back to the force by having this one be over budget. I really like the style of this keyboard. It looks kind of like the Model M, which is one of the keyboards that's on my bucket list. For the price, this thing looks freaking awesome. And you get three switches to choose from, blue, black, and brown. Personally, I think I would go with blue because I like that click. Also, I think the Model M click, so this would be the closest thing to that. You also get RGB lighting, but there's only one picture of RGBs, but the colors are like all over the place instead of being grouped. So this kind of makes me think it's true RGB. There's also side lights and there's yellow. So I'm not sure if they can be changed or if they're stuck as yellow. In terms of the switch, they say it offers the same experience as Cherry MX Brown. So I'm thinking it's Ultimu, but I'm not sure. This keyboard is such a sleeper. I can imagine you bring this keyboard to work, no one would bat an eye. And then you turn on the light and everyone loses their mind. If you do plan on bringing this keyboard to work, I would recommend going with the brown switch or you can see if you can talk it over with your coworkers, see if they're pretty cool with you using a keyboard that clicks. This is a cute keyboard with pink keycaps on the sides, a green escape button. For the money, if you don't mind pink, you can get this for around 70 bucks. But if you want the more standard color like gray, then you're gonna have to shell out like another 20 bucks and you get a red escape key. There's also a red switch version that looks really cool with a blue, pink, and purple theme, but it's pretty freaking expensive going at 120 bucks. I like that one as well. I think this is a budget enthusiast keyboard because it's 60%. You get Gateron switches, which is a switch manufacturer that people in the enthusiasts prefer over MX switch. This is really awesome thing about this keyboard is that you get PBT keycaps. This is really nice considering the price you're going for the $70 one. PBT is a high quality keycaps for the price I think it's worth it. It's also RGB which is just a cherry on top at this point. Last thing is that this keyboard also works with Mac OS so for those Mac users out there looking for an enthusiast keyboard, this might just be the droid you're looking for. The back plate of this keyboard is blue, which is freaking awesome to me. So if you don't like blue, this is not for you. Besides that, there's RGB lighting on the sides and from the picture, I think the back light is either blue or white. From the picture, you have the choice of KO red or KO blue, but I don't know which one is this particular one. I would get the KO blue for the sake of the color scheme, cause then that would be blue back plate with blue backlighting on a blue switch. The layout looks standard so this is good in case if you don't like the keycaps you can just replace it with something else. I think the keycaps are the typical double shot ABS that comes with most clone switches keyboards. This would be a minimalistic keyboard if there wasn't a logo on the upper right corner. Then again the blue backplate and the RGB side blades. Is this keyboard really minimalistic? You also get the media controls bound GDF keys. So so I'm not sure who would use it, but I figured I'd mention it. For the price, I think this is the best bang for buck because you get a mechanical RGB full-size keyboard for around 65 bucks. The layout is standard, you get brown switches, which are nice if you're planning on bringing the keyboard to work. If there isn't that red dragon logo, I think the keyboard would be a different look it would look minimalistic, but that's fine. I think you can peel that logo off, but it might be difficult, so it's kind of up to you. The switch are hot swappable, so if one of your switches happens to break, then you can always get another switch instead of having to replace the entire keyboard. I think this is something that all mechanical keyboards should do. You get a plastic keycap puller, which I do not recommend because those things will scratch your keycaps. So get a wired one if you can. I'll link them just in case if you don't have one. Some of the previous Red Dragon keyboards I review have software. I'm not sure if this one's plug and play. If there is, then it's not a big deal for me, but it might be for you if you don't like software running in the background on your PC. Keycaps are those double shot keycaps with most 
clone keyboards that they use. And the good thing here is that you can always replace them if you don't like them. So, what do you guys think? You like the list? You hate the list? Should I do more lists? Honestly, I actually have a lot of fun doing this, so I plan on doing more and hopefully in the future, I'll bring something new awesome for you guys to enjoy. For the things link, if you buy them from the link, that's great. You'll be supporting the channel and I can make more awesome content for you guys. If you find it cheaper somewhere else, I totally understand. But you can still support the channel. Thumbs up, a like, a comment, hit the bell for more content. You guys stay awesome.